basically we've pulled everything out, everything that you see back in here now has been taken ashore, we've stripped it all down, rebuilt it, refurbished it, bought it all back and refitted it. So for me it's one of those things in life that you really don't really get an opportunity to come and do not only a refit but actually a rebuild of all the parts of the vessel and see what it, um, how it came together and what was required and what was done. And also I think one of the biggest things I found, it gives you the greatest respect for the old timers that built these vessels. Not like today, they're not throwaway items. Everything you can see can be repaired or rebuilt in some format. Built to last. And that's what it was all about. And, um, and when you think back, you know, you go back to what, 1927 when this was done, um, nearly going on 100 years. It's amazing how they built all this with the equipment and knowledge that they had in those days. You know, I really dip my lid to them. One of the last coasters around, and there's so many unique things on here. You know, the size of the main engine being 1,050 kilowatts or 1,400 horsepower. There's not many ship steam engines around of that capacity today. Um, the dynamo system we hear, this was the only power that was here. Um, you know, seven kilowatts, 110 volt power. One of the biggest challenges we've had is actually having to convert it and comply with the new standards. Like, even though we're running on steam, we've now had to put a full electric system in with two gen sets. So all the um, electricity, or the fire, or the bilge pumps are duplicated, but they're all um, run from electricity. And one of the big things in, for the younger generation that come and work on here, we're using HMI systems for all the electrics. So basically, you'll be able to stand at the control panel where we are now, there'll be a iPad there, so to speak, and you want this valve to open, or this bit of machinery to run, or this pump, you'll just press the icon, and up it'll come. So, you know, we really have gone into the 21st it's, century, you yeah, know, with it's, it. it. it's a restoration, but it's more than a restoration. It's two things. So you've got two things here. You've got a restoration of a steamship that, you know, was in its heyday there, and we're still running all that equipment. Everything still runs, but then the backup we have is all electronically um, done for safety and power generated. Um, surprises, not really surprises, but just the amount of work to actually get in and do it because you've got to remember this sat around for goodness knows how long. Um, even now we turn all the main engine, we've got all the plant and equipment running on air. So every month we turn over the main engine, every auxiliary bit of machinery now to do it. Well, you've got to remember all that was all seized up, never worked before. So hence we had to strip it all down, rebuild it, and those are the surprises. The big thing for us is when it does go back in the water, <clears throat> is all the structural and the plates that have all gone on there. You know, I can guarantee the prop shaft's not is going to be out of alignment and that. So we'll have to loosen everything off and realign all the machinery and all the parts that we have. So, you know, the big thing when we come back from the refloat is that we're going to work on and retube all the boilers. And that's one interest that we've had from I guess industry at large, um, there are no big boilers around like this to be retubing that and the amount of people that want to who come down and just want to see it being done, they're actually quite in awe to see that we're taking all the tubes out, we're doing all these things. Um, sailing time is a big is the big challenge and for me and what I've got in my little hot hand here is the um, original sea trials when the John Oxy went to sea back and um, um, 30th of September 1927. So it'll be interesting for us as engineers to see how well all our work, when we do our sea trials, how it compares with what they did back in those days. So it's nice to have that record and we could, we've got some form of comparison. Oh, they, they must have had a hell of a life. Um, seriously, you can imagine the conditions down here, 100 degrees plus. And you've got to remember, you know, when I went to sea, you know, you would have a team of engineers, you'd have junior engineers. Here they only had maximum of three, two engineers. And to do, and to do that, they were on the go all the time. And it wasn't like watch keeping four on eight off in my days. You know, they were basically there 24-7. And that's the way it was. And you've got to admire them for that. Let's get it back in the water. <laughs>